Welcome back to your favorite podcast, A Couple Pines Pod. Dude, let's go! We're finally back together, baby. <laughs> baby! Let's go with that. As you can see, we got new mic stands. We got the guest mic rolling. We got fucking... Brooklyn! We got fucking Donatello or whichever one this is. Yeah, who oh, that's Don? I don't know, the purple one. Oh. Um, <laughs> I don't remember the purple one. And this week, we're going to cover a... Uh, a not so new topic um, and something that if you smoke weed, you've probably thought about, or if you watch Rick and Morty, you've definitely thought about, or yeah. if you are like Colin, you probably think is real. I think about it every day. I don't know if you think it's real. That was just me. I think a it's, it's a, a strong possibility, but yeah. I need more pure evidence to find it true. Elon Musk said it's a strong possibility. Yeah, but Elon's an alien. He might be a part of it. Well, actually, he ties into our theory. We'll bring that up. So this week, we're talking about A Glitch in the Matrix, which is a documentary I watch. We're not talking about the documentary, but the idea of the documentary is that we are living in a simulated world um, because we are not advanced enough. No, that's wrong. <laughs> the idea is... Cut that. Bam! The idea... The idea is that our reality is a simulation that is powered by a more advanced civilization. So, like, there's one real world that has the technology to power thousands of other variations of themselves in computer simulations to basically verify that they're the most advanced right yeah yeah um so there are a couple theories about proving this true obviously there's a bunch about it being false um and we're gonna dive into it i guess it's see do you want to start with the ones that are like you know what this is probably true or do you want to start with the ones that are like you know what this is pretty false um Let's start with the ones that think they're true, and then we'll go from there. So, I mean, I'll, I'll give maybe a brief summary, and then you can really dive in because you have more notes. Does that work? Yeah. So the three theories are basically the one I just said, where we're a simulation powered by some supercomputer on some advanced civilization's world to determine different outcomes of their existence. The second is, what's this say? I don't fucking know. I was really high when I watched the movie. Any this, post-human civilization. Well, that's, is, that's the one we're talking about. So there's some post-human civilization that has supercomputers that can power all the shit we know to be true. Oh, then there's like the video game one, mm -hmm. which is sort of the same, except that People like us, like nobodies, are non-playable characters, NPCs, and then like celebrities and figureheads and the more famous people are like being controlled by someone on another planet. So essentially we're a big video game, which is kind of the same thing, except less automated. Then the third theory is sort of like a, a Truman Show theory where... It's all kind it all kind of breaks down to the same thing where our reality is being projected by something else mm -hmm. in a different place that's more advanced than us. Yeah, that we're one of the lower species on the totem pole and we're pretty much an experiment. Well, not even of, species, a virtual we're, experiment. We're one of the less advanced. Well, that's another theory as well that we're less advanced so we can achieve this like virtual reality that's actually a reality Man. so the theory is that basically we're vr for a different planet yeah which oh my god and whether we're npcs or not maybe we're not and there's two people who are uber advanced who started couple pines pod via us as their like world of warcraft character oh bro what what level would we be well, low, because we're not, it's basically the levels are based off like influence and experience. So like, like 
Barack Obama would be a high level character or like uh, um, Kanye, it came up in the documentary, Kanye West would be like a high level character. High level. Like people who are household names are like high level characters or like, um, fuck, what's that guy's name? Like Chris Kyle, the, oh. the lone survivor is like a high level character. Oh, or like geez. he's more like mid-tier because he's not household name but he's still very famous and has been through so much life experience like okay basically experience is like xp and then the more recognized you are the more xp you have oh, in the higher level God. you are in one of the theories in the in, video yeah game theory. yeah so then that's like people like us who really not that many people know who just kind of exist on a day-to-day -day, like work a nine to five just exist which is sad to think about because I I'd like to bit. I'd like to think I do more than just exist, but basically people like us and everyone we know, unless you know a celebrity, are just like NPCs, just like meh. people people that the playable characters interact with. Yep. That. Why is this making sense? Why is this clicking in my head that it theoretically works? I mean, it does, but it it works in the sense that like religion works like it's a way to cope with life that would be such a harsh coping mechanism to think you're just a fucking character well it's just like everyone wants answers so this is just a sort of like a more outlandish answer as to why we're here and what we're doing i would hate myself if all i thought was everything i do doesn't matter nothing matters well, that's like another argument is like if we are a simulation or if we are some sort of weird vr experience for a post-human people like what does it what what does it like why can't it said in the documentary when this one of the guys brought it up to like his family when he was young his uncle was like so why can't i just go around door to door shooting people or like why can't i just go rob banks with no uh repercussion and it's like well it's not gta like games still have rules oh. at least what i got from it i mean he he just Ooh. followed that up with why is that what you would want to do if this if what i was saying was true so then he broke it down to like some ethical long explanation of like why laws exist and shit but for me it's like basically every game outside of gta has limitations mm -hmm. and you could think of law if we were a game or a simulation or something, there has to be something to keep it in order. Yeah. And that's our, if, if it was real, that's our simulation. Cause like I said, the other theory says there's thousands of them to in like a doctor who way be like, I saw all the outcomes of our existence via the supercomputer. Dude. And like on this one, they formed governments and they, they, somewhat maintained peace except they trashed the environment and they killed themselves and that would be like our thing or like so who knows there could be a simulation where it's just like the purge every day and everyone dies oh okay that's the theory i guess i like if i believed in this would be like there's thousands of different varieties of earth and then there's one real one where they exceeded where we're at now and they have this computer that's like here's what would happen if the if x happened so that that falling into a different reality or that mandela what? effect no, okay that mandela effect is okay it would all be yeah. that uh yeah whoa sure thank you so you're looking at something you're like wait a minute i remember oh, this okay. being something completely different than what i'm seeing right now and then you go back to it and lo and behold it's been the way you didn't think it was all of your life but you remember distinctly that it looked different than how it does well that kind of ties into the matrix theory which is like <sighs> that theory is basically like we've lived a life as ourself and then we died and now we're or we died and now we're plugged into a simulation of the life we lived to fix the mistakes we already made. 
Oy. So like what you were saying, like he says deja vu is like your past conscience coming into your simulation via thing like experiences that really impacted you. And you're like, I've already done this before. And then you make basically the opposite decision to make it work in your favor instead of in your past life where you made the wrong decision and fucked everything up. That's so cool. That is so cool. So let's say, obviously, you're leaning towards you like this, and it could be true. I love this. I honestly look at this, which I spoke about in the documentary, as just like another form of a way to cope with existence. And I don't like that. I don't like, that's why I don't really agree with religion. And I don't really agree with this. Like, I'm here. Mm -hmm. I'm doing my best. I don't know what comes after it. I don't know what happened before it, it being my experience outside of like history and stuff. So like whether it's a simulation or I have to live free of sin or whatever, I don't need that extra comfort to make sense of it. Cause I guess I'm just laid back enough to be like, well, I'm here. So that's enough. Yeah. Bam. But also this whole idea was started by a science fiction novelist named Philip K. Dick. Great fucking name. Philip. And I mean, he inspired a ton of shit. Um, his books revolved around characters struggling against elements such as alternate realities, um, illusionary environments, monopolistic corporations, drug abuse, authoritarian governments and altered states of consciousness. His books went on to inspire things like Blade Runner and like these legendary fucking movies. Uh, where is it? Blade uh, Runner. The Man in the High Castle is set in an alternate history, and that inspired Blade Runner. Um, the Three Sigmata of Palmer Eldritch helped inspire Star Wars by setting up a whole outside universe. Um, he inspired Total Recall, oh, Minority shit. Report. Total Recall? Yeah. Dude, have you ever and they're all that? Yeah, and they're all adaptations of his books. I was so... So Blade Runner 1982 is based on a 1968 novel, Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? And then Ridley Scott took that and said, let's make a movie out of it. Electric Sheep would be a sick rock song. If anyone's going to bring name. it back, Electric Sheep has to be either a song or band Or name. Counting Electric Sheep. That could be a great like, punk band. Hey, you better, if, if you're thinking about starting a rock band, you better take it because we're about to patent that fucking name. And then you're going to have to buy it from us. Well, it's Philip K. Dick's name. Philip K. Dick. He has a patent on Counting Electric Sheep? I mean, it's his content. Fucking these are all his Dick. books. He wrote a shitload of sci-fi books. I assume you can't just take the name of them. Unless he has that TM next to it. Yeah, he's inspired a ton of shit. He's inspired music. So it, I want to get to, in the article, there's a part I highlighted that goes like this. A post-human simulator would have enough computing power to keep track of the detailed belief states in all human brains at all times. Therefore, when it saw a human that was about to make an observation of <clears throat> the microscopic world, it could fill in sufficient detail in the simulation in appropriate domain on an as-needed basis. Should any error occur, the director could easily edit the state of any brain that have become aware of an anomaly before it spoils the simulation itself. Yeah. And that makes me think you, but you can also equate that to like God. Yeah. But that's with... why I'm saying like, that's my big trip up with this whole thing is it's just like a basically like millennial form of religion, even though it was, it started in like the seventies with Philip K. Dick, but like that that's made where me, it is now. That made head. me really think about, this random rise and oh this is fake oh that's a distraction oh yeah. this is that you know how there's people or like are going deja around, vu or yeah, sometimes you see like that. sometimes you see videos of like 
glitches in the matrix or yeah whatever. people are going around saying oh the masses are waking up the and the field is rising we're all getting to that point of awakening yeah what if all this distraction starting to boil up to the surface because the creator has to put it in there in order to for the masses to take a break but so he can fix the simulation what if the creator is a computer if it's just the ultimate ai computer yeah it's just that we all feared computer. that's one of the theories but on some other planet um, we're just a projection like we we're basically earth is living in a hard drive of a supercomputer on some other advanced planet do you think there was Oh, it's like the Rick and Morty episode where they're just in endless simulations. And oh, the yeah. Deeper they get, the... the realer it is. That's like one also one of the theories. Oh. And it was that scene was in the documentary when they finally break the simulation. Fucking right. Oh, br- what's that? The train episode. No, no, no. The. No, the simulation, the the like pink aliens have them in endless oh yeah 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 they end up at a you're um, in a simulation inside a simulation that one in another simulation yeah dude wait so do you think the supercomputer itself is just that single organism running all of the possible outcomes or do you think there's a a super high civilization working with that computer that's another theory like so, that's why that's the other convoluted thing about this is like everything basically ties back to the same core idea but since so many people have thought about this and studied it studied it and written books about it and shit there's like a bunch of variations about the centralized idea that some sort of advanced technology is in some way projecting conscious life into a simulated environment but also Man. like if that's true and that's the case like that's okay because i i'm enjoying it so i'm enjoying like i don't know why well everyone in the documentary is like having these existential crisis crises because like they're like well what if it isn't real? what then why like just fucking enjoy it dude do you think that might be why when people have those near-death experiences, they talk about the light at the end of the tunnel or that feeling of warmth that just comes over them? Well, I don't know, because I think if it was a simulation, like when you die in a video game, you don't see a light or feel warm. Well, we don't know you how just, video you just characters reset. die. I mean, well, that'd be reincarnation, but if one, what if when this part of the simulation... Well, I think that ties. that's more of like a religious viewpoint. Because then also, if we are simulated and we're all these NPCs and whatnot, if we died, why would we see light or feel warm? That would just you be, know, oh, what a, a blip, a small numerical code dis- got deleted. My Oops. mind went, to, Oops. Oops. Do you remember the, um, uh, the Roy game in Rick and Morty? Where you could live a whole life as this guy named Roy? Yeah, that was also, at the end of it, I talked to Olivia about what it last night. What if the yeah. light is the game well, that was, shutting off that the was, warmth is your own heat from the helmet you put on. Well, that was one of the guy's theories. He's like, yeah, for all we know, when we die, we just wake up in an arcade, pop another quarter in, and live another life. This guy took Roy off the grid. He's yeah. got no social credit score. No, Roy was also basically someone's entire theory. Wow. Yeah. Dude, I have to pee so bad. This is getting me okay, so excited. Okay, yeah, so do I. Let's, uh, let's lap it. Should we cross swords? I mean, I'll hold yours if you hold mine. Okay. That's what podcasters do when it's time to start again. They snap? <clears throat> yeah, I've been listening to a lot of podcasts, and they're always like, give me a snap when they want to cut. So I'm going to start doing that. Give me a snap. Um, so should we just do like a, a conclusion and then move on? It's a, like it's a lot to unpack, but I feel like we did a pretty good job of it. I think we did a great job. Um, Is there any avenue we can think about that we haven't? Well, I mean, you could also say that, like, let's say everything we just said doesn't exist yet, and there's supposed to be one real humanity, and so far we're it. Maybe something like Oculus and the metaverse, and now this AR and VR 
these realities we're building outside of our own become this entire idea once it's advanced enough especially like augmented reality which is like in the trailer how that guy was like a video game character but he was in his room like that's ar and then vr is when you strap the headset on but like that could also re kind of invigorate the entire idea that like maybe we're the players or we're we're becoming the players Mm. in this world that these people have been contemplating and studying since the 70s whoa that makes me think what if the metaverse gets so good that the freaking character that you built gets so realistic that it begins to have these off action well yeah that's that's what i'm saying like it'd be like logging out of a video game like gta or world of warcraft or something but your character keeps playing or like animal crossing or any of these like legend any of these rpg games but especially when it's ar or vr you log out and then when you like when i log back in it's like well i didn't and this isn't where i saved and exited and then you find out that like your character keeps existing while you're not there which then would lead to the entire theory that there's a created reality outside of someone else's in this new theory we're making up our reality that we control we play as but at the end of the day it's its own thing and then it becomes this paradox or this incept or this inception of then does that character grow to think like we do and then that character creates a reality within a reality keep talking i don't know that's i don't know your music made me nervous (laughs) that's the inception shit oh my god i need a top i need to spin a top right now is any of this real so (laughs) much to unpack I can't believe this has been talked about for so long, too. Yeah, the original Philip K. Dick uh, brought it up in, like, 1977 at some, like, tech conference in uh, in France. I forget the town. But it was, like, some worldwide tech summit where, like, only the smartest people were allowed. And, like, he gave this speech, and he was, like, he starts it with, nothing i'm about to say is proven which means i can say whatever i want but here but here are my theories on what i'm about to say and then he goes into what we just spoke about but also i mean outside of like tying it into religion you could tie it into what we talk about all the time like the universe is full of infinite possibilities this could be real this could be fake who fucking knows because we don't know what's out there would, and maybe we don't know what's out there because whatever's out there is our creator. So not in a God sense, in a scientific sense. Would that make the government agents taking masses of DMT in order to talk to the interdimensional beings that they've recorded? Would that be them technically breaking the simulation? Well, if it is a simulation, maybe that's just some whoever was controlling that group of people was like, I'm going to fuck with the person who created this. Dude, like that, that's all. If it is a simulation, then that whoever created that, that would make that part of the simulation is like a hacker. And they compared a lot of these guys like not the people who are like, I believe this, but a lot of the scientists who have been studying what Dick said back in the (laughs) seventies were a lot of them, like a majority of them. I think there were like six or seven different like tech science philosophy type people who this is their life have compared it to Minecraft. Like where someone went in and built a world and inhabited it and then someone says like and this is where elon musk comes in shouts out the beginning of the episode when you create a world in minecraft there's villagers and those are the npcs and then 
your god mode. You're the architect. You're the architect. And when you go into a village, all of them like circle around you and just stare at you. So it's like you can equate that to Elon Musk just appearing and giving us all this shit and everyone's eyes are on Elon Musk in the sense of like, if something happens, he's the headline. If he does something, he's the headline. So people think maybe comparative to Minecraft, like he's from the place that started this VR simulation to see what would happen. And then since he's so brilliant, he was like, I'm going to go there and fuck with them. Wow. Or I'm going to go there and help them become like us. Or I'm going to go there and he like some sort of outside technological goal. Would that? So if this, if, if what we're well, saying. Well, that's just another theory. That's so if not we're like, going along with that. Would that make Joe Rogan a black sheep of the simulation right now? Whoa, I'm not trying to get canceled, bro. Oh, that's just a phrase for outcast. I plead the fifth. So if no, he's... no, not black sheep, Joe Rogan, bro. Well, that's just I'll it. talk black sheep all day. If, if he is going through all this turmoil right now, because people are like, you can't have opinions. I mean, it's a, I'm a, look, I enjoy his content. But also, like, he does have to realize he is the most influential voice on the internet. And that's why he needs to keep asking these questions and having these people on. But he's the things that are happening right now could have been avoided if you realized how big he was. But he also wasn't asking questions, he was making definitive statements about sensitive subjects, which I can't, which I can't support. That is very true. There was no an open-ended question of an it wasn't, if or possible. Hey, Jordan and- Peterson, blah, blah, blah. It was, I feel this way. And then another very influential person said, I feel this way. And then. Now that is treading into the waters of you can't feel anything anymore. That is treading. If, if you're watching and you understand where we're trying to well, say. Well, now we're out. I don't even know what we're trying to say. We're outside of the simulation, bro. So back we're to breaking simulation laws, talk. bro. We're on him. He's going through all this turmoil right now. Would that make him a main character or would that make him a oh, side no, he's, distraction he's, to no, fix the simulation? Absolutely one of the playable characters. It's fucking Joe Rogan. So I wonder if he's a playable character that's starting to get out of line. So the one creator is starting to throw all of this, this backlash. backlash towards him to be like, hey, don't you forget who daddy is. Yeah, settle down. Maybe. I don't know. That would be wild because nature repeats itself. But also, like, we do have to stay publicly. Like, he, at least I feel, he is out of line. He, in the past, 100%. when people have tried to cancel Rogan, I'm like, okay, that you're being just opinionative and it's unnecessary. But like this time, he did overstep multiple boundaries. Yeah. I feel like he used the I feel or I know or those terms way too tightly yeah. to what he was saying and he is a controversial controversial person. person but this most recent thing and i don't want to get strikes so i'm not going to say what it is if you know you know if you don't go to go watch his up. jordan peterson episode but he did overstep quite a like even i once i saw it and i listened to the episode i was like that's not cool yeah just in a sense of like what he stands for, which is like learning and equality and things like that. So, ah, yeah, you would hundred percent have to fall into that line. But I don't think this if it, character if is, it is a game. Line. I don't think public cancellation is like a punishment. I think that's the rest of the simulation but if being he's like, a main, wait, this is, this is causing turmoil. Let's get rid of if it. If he's a main character, what happens in every good video game? You go through a storyline part where you're thrown into a dungeon or thrown into a jail because you're trying to do whatever you're, you're the, st- the plot of the story is. You're trying to achieve that goal. But the a- outside forces are like, hey, fuck off, pal. Yeah. And they put you in the dungeon. So what if this is the, the main architect going, I'm, I'm about to put you in the dungeon, pal. You better get back to the way I told you to play the game. I mean, it could be, but that only makes the main architect more humanitarian than... That is true. All, that would not make him all a true... For the, all for the main characters. Oh, I wonder if he's crumbling. 
because in Loki, remember Kang? Yeah. He's like, I've been doing this too long. Yeah. What if it's getting to that point? Maybe. What if he's like, I've been doing this too long. I gotta, gotta get out of here. <laughs> I gotta go. Wow. This is awesome. I love this topic so much. Yeah, it's a good one. Well, and there's look just at us. we hit our goal too. There's just a lot of a lot to break down with this. Um this is fun. There's way there's so much in here that if you were to ever just search it up on Google for any sort of peer review article, the research article or even Dick himself, there's your brain's not going to stop working. It's just going to roll and roll and yeah. roll until you decide to go to a different subject. I mean, even at the end of the documentary, Olivia was like, that was crazy. And I was like, I don't like, I don't know. I just don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't. Like, I'm like, okay, I'm here. That's it. We're good. We're chilling. Oh, that's awesome. I, I, got, I got what you're. Oh, thank you. Oh, that looks... Bro, okay. you better give a shout out to who made that. Yeah, shouts out Olivia for this dank breakfast sandwich at 5.30. I just want to shout out our dank GFs for being so freaking supportive of our dream. A good sandwich. Ooh. You know See, it's a good sandwich. This is why I don't believe in a simulation. Why is this sandwich so good? You can't simulate the taste of the Sammy. Like, think about a video game when you trade up with someone. or like, I'll give you... 30 apples for one gold. I'm basing all of this off World of Warcraft. The NPC doesn't eat the apples. They resell them. I'm eating that Sammy. Also, this wasn't sold to me. It's I don't know where this point's going. This sandwich, <laughs> this sandwich is fire. Oh. Such all a... All right. Well, hey. This is Ben. But is this sandwich just zeros and ones? <laughs> Is the is the architect really putting this Sammy to my mouth right now? Because I'm not we, even a huge fan of scrambled eggs, and this is just delicious. I feel like the architect heard us talking about this, and he was like, I'm making that sandwich bussin', so I'm distracting his ass. Maybe. Um, is you bussin'? Okay, I'll stop Two eating. shots? I'll stop bussin'. eating on the mic, because I hate when people eat on the mic. Um, this has been a couple fine spot. It's safe to say... Fucking download the newest patch of humanity and uh, make sure you cop that DLC. Yes. Oh, and also we're fixing the YouTube link. We're so sorry. Oh, yeah. We're going to do that right now. Thank you so much. This logo is throwing me off. It feels like my hat's crooked. Life rips, dude. It feels like my hat's off. Yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye. <laughs>